Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my March and April empties. Now I will just say I don't have an immense amount of empties to share with you. However, I do have some pretty good products and I'm really excited to get on into it. Generally, I would leave makeup until the end because it's the most exciting thing, but I just want to kick it off with my makeup empties because I have mentioned these already in my kind of like makeup spending update video. So you are probably already familiar with these ones. I will not, however, allow for there to be any spoiler alerts for my project pan update. So keep tuned for that video because I do have empties to share then. But today we'll just talk about the other empties that I finished in the last couple of months. The first one being the Bite Beauty French Press Lip Gloss in the shade Flat White. I cannot believe I got that all out in one take. It's no longer avail available. It is long discontinued and I believe it was limited edition anyways. It's a very light toned, kind of almost concealer lip sort of situation, but I flew through this. So if you have one of these in the back of your collection somewhere and you're a panner and you wanna get through a lip gloss kind of product, this was one that went surprisingly quickly and I didn't find it to be too much of a hassle to wear. It wasn't a favorite formula, but I am really happy that I have used it up and it's making its way out of my collection. And then I did also recently finish off a brow gel. This is the Merit, I believe it's called the 1980. I can't remember, cause it doesn't say like their actual product names on here, but this is the Volumizing Pomade. I had mine in the shade Blonde, which is actually quite a deep shade for a blonde brow gel. Maybe I'll try to put it on my skin. Yeah, it's quite deep, surprisingly. But this was a really nice volumizing um, kind of brow enhancing product. I didn't find that it had the most longevity in terms of holding my brows, but that's something that I find doesn't often happen. Many formulas for me personally, I do find that my brows end up falling throughout the day and I don't find it to be too much of a nuisance to kind of like fluff them back up or if they fall to just kind of go with it. So it wasn't an issue that it didn't hold extremely well, but it did create a nice shape, a little bit more oomph to my brows, and I did like it for that. Um, I did show you the wand. It is a little bit larger than my personal preference. I think the e.l.f. Wow Brow is probably like my favorite size of brow gel wand because the ends of my brows are very small. So this could get a little bit messy on occasion. It's a little too large for that area, but it was uh, good enough to finish up. In fact, I actually did pull the stopper out and get every last possible usable bit out of here. And yeah, it did the trick just fine. And that sometimes is okay. It's one of those things I could take it or leave it, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then I also recently finished off this. This mascara I purchased at the beginning of February. This is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist. This is in the shade Very Black and it's already done. I opened it up pretty much immediately after I purchased it because I had already finished off the other mascaras in my life, so I actually really needed one when I brought this one in. And I used it exclusively until about the middle of April, maybe maybe about a week ago. I'm filming this today is the 22nd, so about a week ago, and it is just not usable anymore for me personally. I don't get it because that's like not even two full months of use, but it was everyday use. And we know that I like to wear makeup pretty much five to six days a week. So it did get a substantial number of uses in that time frame for sure. This just got really flaky, really dry, very, very quickly. So this wand did allow me to get um, a good application. I didn't find that it was too messy, uh, too difficult with my small eyes by any means, but this, just did not have longevity for me. It came out very, very nice in the beginning couple weeks of using it, maybe like two, three weeks. And after that, it turned so quickly. It went downhill and it got really, really dry. And it seemed like nothing was coming out on the wand either. I'd have to literally like sit on this for my body heat to like warm it up and make it malleable enough to apply to the lashes. And so I will never repurchase this product uh, because it just was too much to deal with for a mascara. I want something that's 
just effortless and thoughtless when it comes to mascara and this was not it. I did notice that it would flake throughout the day, um, especially after that initial couple weeks of reaching for it. And yeah, it's just not a favorite. I recently decided it was time to work through some of my fragrance samples because I do have a pretty decent amount of options um, when it comes to these little like sample sizes. So it was time to just start working through them instead of just holding on to them for the like never happening what if kind of occasion you know what I mean so I finished off four of these pin rose ones I'm so happy I finally finished these because I bought these in the Sephora sale I want to say in 2020 now I'm not great with fragrance um profiles and explaining like the the notes but I will tell you out of the four my two favorites were Gilded Fox and Secret Genius I have a full size of Secret Genius. I also have a candle and a body lotion of Secret Genius that I did get in PR from Pinrose because it's an absolute favorite fragrance of mine. It has this beautiful, almost tropical, but sweet, fresh kind of scent. And then I also really enjoyed um, the, sh the scent Gilded Fox. This was a little bit more masculine, a little bit more sexy and evening versus um, Secret Genius definitely is more of a fresh kind of version. And it does say on here what the notes are. So just for comparison's sake, Secret Genius is that vanilla and caramel, so very sweet, versus Gilded Fox is cocoa and rum. So it's a lot more rich and warm. And yeah, they were both amazing fragrances. I always had both of these actually in my bag for depending on kind of the vibe that I was going for. And I'm happy that I recently finished them both off. And I'm happy that I have a full size of Secret Genius, but I would be very much tempted to get a full size of Gilded Fox. And then my lesser favorite fragrances here are Merry Maker and Pillow Talk Poet. These are just much more feminine, much more soft fragrances. Uh, Merry Maker is primarily nectarine and plum, so it's much more fruity, a lot more sweet, um, versus like those more sensual sweet scents like vanilla is. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I just don't tend to prefer these more fruity kind of sweet scents. And then Pillow Talk uh, Poet was just too, too soft for me, too powdery, and the main note is powder, amber, and musk. And if it didn't have that powdery kind of undertone to it that like laundry kind of scent to it I would definitely prefer it but um yeah it just was not a favorite I just realized that you could see the skincare that I was trying to um set aside so let's just talk about skincare next I suppose what you can see here is the Malin and Getz grapefruit face cleanser this was a decent cleanser not my go-to everyday cleanser by any means I did receive this from influencer I think last like February or March so it took me a while to work my way through it actually but I just kept it in the shower for those days when like I needed like a good clean I would use this on my face my neck the top of my chest even take it to like the back of my neck and just like give myself a really good deep cleanse with this. I didn't find that it was stripping by any means, but it really did feel like a good deep cleanser because it did foam up um, and kind of help to really pull kind of things off of the skin. It really did feel like that. If I went in with oily skin or with like makeup residue still on my face, I really did feel clean without that squeaky kind of feeling. It lathered really well and I did really enjoy the fragrance on this. I didn't find it to be irritating because I do have a fragrance allergy and I didn't find it to be an issue whatsoever for me, but it's not a product that I'm going to go and pick up. I have a favorite cleanser, which is this guy right here, the Pacifica Kale Detox. I go through these very regularly, extremely consistently. They're in every single one of my empties videos, and it's just because it does give me actually a lot of the same sort of properties that the Malin Gets one does. It really makes my skin feel so extremely clean without feeling stripped, and it just makes my skin feel really, really good. And it has proven to be a really great cleanser option for me for absolutely years. So I'm never going to stray away from this one. When I have opportunities to try other options, sure, I'll take it and I'll give them a shot, but they're not, I know this will never be my go-to the way that the Kale Detox is. It's just been a tried and true favorite for absolutely forever. It really does feel to me like it is a high-end kind of cleanser. And although it is catered towards more of a oily skin type technically, 
I have normal skin. I've used it when I had really dry skin when I was an, on an acne medication and it works for me no matter what. And it's very, very accessible in my opinion because I can pick it up at Shoppers Drug Mart, well.ca, Carrie Pacifica. Um, even some grocery stores now here in Canada do carry Pacifica. And I know in the States it's at Ulta and Target, like it is very accessible where I live. And that is an added bonus for sure versus Melon Gets is not as affordable. And I believe it's only available through Sephora. So definitely love this. I rave about it all the time. I'm sorry for being so lengthy about it because you hear about it all the time anyways. <laughs> Finished off a couple different sizes of the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. This is not cruelty free. I have talked about it before on my channel, but I know that not everyone is familiar. I don't consider myself to be cruelty free anymore. It was something that was important to me in the past. However, these days I prefer to purchase cruelty free. However, I have additional kind of concerns outside of simply just cruelty free. But when it comes to purchasing things that are effective, sometimes I need to go for options that are not technically cruelty-free. However, First Aid Beauty has always been cruelty-free until very recently, like last year when it went into the Chinese market. And that is a whole different other conversation and topic that I just feel really overwhelmed by. And that's why I want to no longer identify as cruelty-free. It's just such a convoluted, situation. In any case, First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream is just such a tried and effective product for me that I cannot stray away from it. I can't. When I was experiencing really severe rashes last year and even earlier this year, I know that this is just the product that works for me and it's just become my everyday essential. So I recently finished off the six ounce tub and then I also recently finished off the two ounce kind of mini size. This came in a set with the large eight ounce tube and it was a really great deal. So I picked it up uh, not that long ago and I thought that I would use it as like a kind of travel product. I would use it in my handbag. I ended up just keeping it at my desk, which is here at home. I work from home and I just used it nonstop throughout the day over the like last couple months and it was just amazing. Like on my hands or days when I didn't wear makeup, I would put it on my face and my neck just to kind of rehydrate my skin. Absolutely love this product. It works for me head to toe. It works for me no matter what kind of skin issues I am facing. And it has become an everyday staple in my household. My boyfriend and I both use this as our daytime and nighttime moisturizer now. So I fly through tubs of this because we both are reaching for it. There's one on my bedside table right now, and there's one in the kitchen cupboard. Kitchen cupboard? No, the bathroom cupboard. <laughs> I just said the kitchen cupboard. No, it's in the bathroom cabinet. <laughs> and they're the large size tubs. We just love it. We just find that it is so great because it's unscented and it sits well on the skin no matter what issues you're facing. It sits great under makeup, over other skincare products. It's just, it's just good. So it's gonna be a constant repeat for me in my life because I know it works and I don't really honestly feel like I need any other moisturizers. I do have other ones that I sprinkle into my skincare routine from time to time, but this is my favorite for sure. I mentioned in my last empties that I purchased the e.l.f. Holy Hydration as a replacement for the Inky List Cleansing Balm. Gotta say, I worked my way through this and I did not love it near as much. I did mention in that last empties video that it was just not a favorite. I think that these tub kind of situations for me, just not fun, not fun. It, and it's so silly to be hypercritical of that, but I just tend to prefer a squeezy tube. So I did end up repurchasing the Inky List one. And this does have fragrance in it, which I'm not a fan of. I do have a fragrance allergy. So I try to avoid it where and when I can. Like I can wear perfume because I wear it on my clothing versus on my skin directly. But when it comes to skincare products, I do want to be more cognizant of eliminating that because it really is a true irritant for me. So I will not be repurchasing this. I actually have kind of made myself a little bit of a vow to not be repurchasing e.l.f. skincare products ongoing. 
This is not a recyclable tub, although you would think this would be recyclable. It's a pretty standard looking plastic. It's not, it's not stamped. The brand has said that their packaging is not recyclable. It's just the bare minimum that brands should be doing moving forward. Um, we should be getting better packaging options than just recyclable, but it's a start. And so I've decided that I'm not gonna be purchasing from e.l.f. until they at least make that change, if not even do better than just making their options recyclable. And yeah, I don't know, it was, Decent, like it did the trick just fine to take off my makeup. I didn't find that I was left with too much makeup residue or anything like that after using this. But all things considered, I just feel like there's better options out there. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. And lastly, for skincare, I have the Derma E Ultra Hydrating Alkaline Gel Booster. This is their hyaluronic acid treatment. This is a really nice product. I found that it wasn't overly sticky or overly thick like some hyaluronic acids can be. And I found that I wanted to reach for this very often because I actually did see visual results. So what I would do is I would cleanse my skin and then like, you know, remove my cleanser and everything. Then I would leave my skin a little bit damp. I would even like make down my neck and the top of my chest a little bit damp. And those days when my face was very dry or I found that my lines looked really pronounced, I would take a couple drops of this, kind of work it in my hands and then press it into the skin and then top it off with my remaining skincare products just in the evening time. And I really did find that my skin looked more plump, a little bit more hydrated in the morning time after using this. So it was extremely effective in my opinion. I really like the texture. I've tried other ones that just feel really, really tacky. And I mean, that means that it's probably sticking on your skin very well, but it just didn't like the feeling. Um, the Ordinary one, for example, is a lot more sticky. But ever since I finished this one up, I have been using one that I got from the Inky List. They sent it in PR last summer and I finally just opened it up. And I really like that texture as well. It's a lot thinner than this one and it sits on the skin very nicely, but I haven't been able to put to the test of like full results, but I'm not going to be repurchasing this one simply because I have another option already in my collection. However, once I know more thoroughly my thoughts on the Inky List one, then I can really tell you if I would be able to, like if I want to go back to this one because this was really, really nice. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, I do have a couple hair care products, two of which are repeat, repeat purchases, so I should try to be very brief here. Avalon Organics Clarifying Lemon Shampoo. You know the deal with this one. It's my favorite shampoo. I just find it to be the most effective on my troublesome scalp. However, now that I know I have a fragrance allergy, I have been trying some fragrance-free shampoos here and there to see if maybe that was always the culprit, if that was always the problem for me and I have been able to try some other options, including the one that goes alongside this conditioner, the Derma E Scalp Relief Conditioner. I have this as an empty because, remember my last empties video where I was going on and on and on about the new packaging? Well, I wasn't able to get the conditioner out of this new packaging that's so, so stiff, it's impossible to squeeze product out of here. So I would have to like take off this cap and just shake the shit out of it. Like just shake the conditioner into my palm. And I lost a lot of product by doing that. It was impossible though to get this out in a very elegant way. Even though I stored it upside down in my shower, I'd open it up and it just refused to leave the bottle. It refused to vacate. I definitely will not purchase this online. I will have to repurchase this in person if I do decide I want to repurchase it, but I will have to be <laughs> like going up to every bottle on the shelf like this. And I'm gonna get some weird looks, I'm sure, because I'm gonna be squeezing every shampoo and conditioner bottle, but just, I gotta feel, is it right? This is not right. I did actually decide though, like after the whole debacle of this packaging and just like, really recognizing how much packaging I consume and go through via these empties videos, that kind of thing. I did decide that I'm going to purchase or recently did purchase a conditioner bar. So we'll see how that goes. Probably will be 
something that I enjoy just based on the fact that I'm pretty easygoing when it comes to conditioner, but we'll see. I will keep you posted on that experience for sure. And lastly, I have one additional conditioner product. This took me forever to work through because I despised the fragrance of this. This is the Green Beaver Company Invigorating Tea Tree Conditioner. It smelled like lice shampoo or like reminiscent of lice shampoo from when I was a kid. So I just could not, could not get down with this. It kind of felt all right on the scalp, um, not as immensely refreshing and invigorating as the Derma E version, which is just so cooling and soothing and amazing. It really is a great experience when it comes to the Derma E option. This did not have that same intensity and I did not have the same love for the experience or the feeling of this one in comparison to that by any means. But I did want to try it because it's a Canadian brand. So I just kind of wanted to try something as an alternative to the Derma E and this was not was not it for me. Yeah, this fragrance for me was not as um, sophisticated. Like the Derma E one, it is, I believe, primarily tea tree, but it's got this like minty, very spa-like scent to it. And this just didn't feel as refined. Not a favorite, definitely not gonna repurchase this one. I would be keen to try more products from Green Beaver. I have tried a handful and They've never really left me like wanting more, but I would be curious to try more just given that it's a Canadian brand and I want to, of course, support Canadian where, when I can. But I feel like I'm in a very strange mood, so sorry about everything from today's video. But yeah, that is everything. I hope you enjoyed all these empties. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these products or any of the products that I purchased in their place. But yeah, that's everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.